The original VLA, when it was completed in 1980, had only four receiver systems in them, and they were all fairly narrow band. This was the best that technology could offer us at that time. Uh, over the years, we added some receiver bands of wider bandwidth, so by, by the time that the EVLA project began, we were up to six receiver bands, all of them rather different than the originals, but still keeping to the same philosophies. The EVLA has eight receiver bands. The two newest ones, which have not been outfitted on the VLA before, are called KA and S-band. The final two receivers we're going to look at in our tour of the ground floor of the, uh, of the Pete V. Diminici Science Operations Center uh, are, are going to show you these two new bands. Before us here, we have what's called KA band, 27 to 40 gigahertz. And Bob, what's uh, interesting and different about this one? Well, what's different from this band, uh, from the KU band uh, receiver that uh, we've looked at previously, is that it, it's smaller. It's, it's uh, uh, twice as... Uh, it's twice as twice high in frequency, frequency yeah. and half the uh, wavelength. Half the wavelength. It's got a uh, uh, another one of these uh, Wallach-style OMTs, and what you can't see up here is the little phase shifter that gives us the 90 degrees phase shift between the two uh, vertical polarizations. So what comes out of the OMT is left. Well, actually, this is right circular, and uh, left circular comes out the bottom. Uh, the amplifiers uh, for uh, that give us our gain of a thousand on uh, the outputs of the OMT are located here and up here. And all these uh, pretty blue things are the uh, what's needed to transfer from, from waveguide into coax. The coax is what you see in these uh, uh, little uh, spiral 18-inch uh, long uh, pieces of uh, coax. And so that allows us to operate things in here at a very cold temperature, about 15 to 20 degrees, and get our signal out of the doer without warming up everything inside. Bob, what is the black part in here? What, does that look a little bit different than the other receivers? Yeah, that's, that's one thing we haven't discussed, uh, is we use stainless steel to get the signal out of the doer without uh, causing a, a heat loading on si inside of the, uh, the doer. Uh, on the input, uh, again, everything up here is sitting at 300 degrees, but uh, right at about this point, everything sits at about 20 degrees. And so the way we do that is that there's a small gap of about so seven thousandths of an inch here. Uh, and that has to be controlled uh, quite accurately so that it doesn't shift sideways or in and out. And so this fiberglass system allows us to have a nice concentric uh, seven thousandths of an inch gap between the 300 degree world and the, the 20 degree whirl inside the doer. So the temperature on each side of the gap varies by that much? Yep. But there's, mm -hmm. no, there's no contact mm -hmm. except, for, except for the fiberglass, which yeah. is what holds that 7,000 gap. It, it makes it stable. Yeah. That's yeah. right. 